Hello everyone, my name is Liz Dykeman. I'm the Research and Evaluation Lead at the Regional Arts Commission. I'm excited to be talking to you today about local arts agencies, um, both an overview and being able to benchmark RAC to several comparable LAAs. So in this presentation, we're going to be talking first a little bit about benchmarking, um, then local arts agencies, and then we're going to dig into um, some case studies to better understand both the revenue and expenses by LAA to understand over time how RAC compares uh, to its peers. So first and foremost about the benchmarking, um, we're going to be looking at four different local arts agencies. So the first is of course RAC and its service area, St. Louis City and County. Um, the Arts Council of Indianapolis and its service area, Marion County. Fund for the Arts, um, its service area, Jefferson County, and then Arts KC, uh, which serves both counties in Missouri as well as Kansas City. So these um, organizations, these other LAAs, were selected um, based on um, their location, their size, uh, of course being public arts funders, etc. Um, I do want to just point out again that when we're talking about these areas, so when we talk about per capita funding or any other population based indicator, again, for these LAAs, we're talking about the areas that they serve, not necessarily the metropolitan service areas, um, statistical areas, pardon me, that they're located in. So that's important to know. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out, um, and we'll talk about more in the next slide, is that um, while all of these uh, local arts agencies are organized as uh, nonprofits, they um, are variously situated between government um, and private philanthropy. Um, I think in particular, it's important to note that Fund for the Arts is actually a United Arts Fund. United Arts Funds provide funding for arts and cultural engagement in a specific city or region, primarily through funding from individual workplace, corporate and foundation donors. So that is to say that they're really, their function is to uh, be a fundraiser and kind of, kind of like the United Way, if you will, um, and to raise funds outside of government. Um, so that is to say that they are both a local, local arts agencies, agency and a United Arts Fund. Um, and as we'll talk about more, um, each LAA is very different in terms of um, its relationship to government, relationship to private philanthropy, et cetera. Um, something that is really important to note as we go into, oh, oh pardon me, before I continue, um, I just also wanted to point out really quickly that we will be looking at three different years in terms of date range, 2018, 2019, and 2020. Um, I wanted to make sure that when we're talking about revenues and expenses, so we had a multi-year view. Um, as I'm sure everyone well knows, um, in the nonprofit field, um, you know, especially revenues vary drastically by year. Um, depending on the organization and feel that you're talking about. So I thought it was important to be able to provide three year averages or a theory of view to um, get a more comprehensive view of how LAAs are functioning, both in terms of expenses and revenues. What I was going to say is as we move on to the next slide, it's really important to note that there is very little consensus in the arts nonprofit field around local arts agencies. Um, kind of, while there is a very general definition um, that a lot of folks use um, that really centers on LAAs um, promoting, supporting, and developing arts at the local level, there's very little consensus, consensus in what local arts agencies are or do beyond that. Um, that's because we're talking about a very, very diverse field in terms of how they're organized. Are they government agencies? Are they nonprofits? Um, the services they provide, um, if they even do grant making, what types of grant making they do, um, other types of activities like public art, et cetera. And this is all to say that we're just talking about a very, very diverse field. And honestly, uh, the sector doesn't have a great grasp on um, the local arts agency scene. Um, just as a point of reference, um, I know the Americans for the Arts estimates that there are 4,500 local arts agencies in America. The National Endowment for the Arts actually estimates that they're closer to like 1,700 arts organizations. There is very little that we know about local arts agencies. Um, and unfortunately, there is not necessarily a secondary data source like the US Census I can go to and just pull down data about local arts agencies. 
Um, anything you want to know about lo local arts agencies, you really have to collect yourself, which is why the presentation I'm providing to you now is focused on case studies instead of doing an analysis of an entire data set. We just don't, do not have um, that kind of information assembled um, about local arts agencies. Having said that, Americans for the Arts does conduct every year um, a survey of local arts agencies. Um, and I think that while it's certainly not comprehensive um, or even representative potentially, um, it is very important to help us just get a very basic understanding of what we're talking about when we talk about LAAs. Um, and I think that this is really helpful information, contextual information to have as we start diving into um, some case study analysis. So first and foremost, 70% of uh, LAAs are private nonprofit organizations, 30% are government agencies. 58% operate a competitive grant making program, 55% award grants to organizations, and 39% award grants to individuals. I think we can already start to tell that RAC is going to be a little bit different than a lot of other LAAs. One, it's a government agency, which is about only one, or pardon me, um, it's a quasi-governmental agency, which I think probably falls under the government agencies. Um, and also awards grants to artists, which is obviously not what the majority of the field is doing. 62% uh, of LEAs manage one or more cultural facilities, 54% manage a public art program, 33% of those manage a percent for art program. 34% um, of LEAs reported that their LEA is likely to eliminate at least one paid position permanently as a result of the pandemic, including 16% that already did so. So now we're turning a little bit more to 2020 findings um, to get a better sense of the impact of COVID-19 on the local arts agency uh, field. Um, the other important thing to know is 42% of respondents agreed that my LA has a diverse income revenue stream that is sustainable in 2020, which hopefully in theory would um, of course help their financial health throughout COVID-19. So those are just a couple of facts to really quickly anchor us um, in the local arts agency field. And again, to provide a little bit more contextual information about local arts agencies as we begin a deep dive um, into some case studies. So the first thing we're gonna be looking at is total revenue across time. Um, in 2018 and 2019, RAC had the second largest annual revenue um, after Fund for the Arts. Three of the four LAAs had small increases in revenue between 2018 and 2019. RAC had the largest budget increase between those years. Of course, three of the four LAAs also had decreases between 2019 and 2020 due to COVID-19. The Indianapolis Arts Council was the only one not to increase, or pardon me, decrease their revenue. Um, and they actually increased the revenue by about five times as much as they had in 2018. Of course, RAC had the biggest losses between 2019 and 2020, losing about $3.9 million. So something that's important to note is, um, as we can see, um, the Arts Council of Indianapolis had an incredibly good year in 2020. It is an anomaly. That is because they received a $10.2 million grant from the Lilly Endowment, um, which is one of, I believe, um, in the top 10 largest philanthropies in the world that is located in Indianapolis. Um, that granted them um, COVID-19 relief funds um, that they were that they distributed to arts organizations and individual artists. So that is why we see such a huge increase in funding for Indianapolis in just that one year. It's because we're seeing a very large one-time grant that largely is going to pass through the organization and benefit their community. So next we're going to look at um, Pardon me. Per capita funding by LAA. So really what we're doing here is essentially we're dividing total annual revenues that we just looked at um, by the population in each LAA service area, more or less, so we can get a sense of um, what is the funding per person and the service area. So RAC per capita funding for the single city and county is um, the second largest. Um, after Fund for the Arts, which as we saw, like total revenue. Um, Fund for the Arts has a slightly larger budget than um, RAC and a, and a significantly smaller service area. Um, so it's not a surprise that their per capita funding is a little bit higher. 
When we're looking at RAC over 2018 and 2019, um, the average per capita funding was $5.18. Um, the Arts Council of Indianapolis and especially Arts KC have much less per capita funding for the arts. And this is where you know, we really need a little bit more information about the funding landscape of these um, service areas to maybe better understand the role that LAs play or public uh, funding plays in these ecosystems. So something that's really important to know about both Arts KC and Arts Council of Indianapolis um, is that those cities that they're located in have two of the top 50 largest nonprofits in, or pardon me, private foundations in the world. Um, and both of their LAAs have uh, one, uh, I shouldn't say regularly grant to arts and culture, but they do grant to arts and culture. Um, so it's, you know, there's um, a possibility that, you know, we're seeing lower levels of public funding per capita um, in these service areas, but there's no reason that maybe the difference isn't being made up by private philanthropy that seems to be much more prevalent in those service areas than say St. Louis City and County. So that's something to, important to remember as we talk about, um, you know, the role that these LAAs play in their arts ecosystem. Next, we're gonna be looking at um, revenues. So all of this data comes from IRS Form 990s, which really divides um, revenues into four large buckets. The first is contributions and grants, um, and that's exactly what it sounds like. Those are the different individual, corporate, uh, private philanthropy uh, grants and, found, or pardon me, grants and contributions um, that LAs receive. The second is program service revenue or earned income. Uh, the third is investment income, and then the fourth is other income, which includes a variety of miscellaneous um, incomes. So obviously all four LAs have incredibly high reliance on contributions and grants. That is to say that um, clearly the vast majority of their revenues comes from contributions and grants. 99.8% of RAC's revenue comes from contributions and grants, a very, very high percentage. ArtsKC did look a little bit different um, from other LAAs. As you can see, there's um, a little bit of a green bar <laughs> below zero, and that's because they had a loss of about 5.7% of income, um, which is you know, why it looks, again, a little bit different than other organizations is they did report some losses in their income. So now that we know contributions and grants are where the majority um, of funds are raised for these different LAAs, it's important to actually dig a little bit deeper um, and understand what exactly is making up contributions and grants for each LAA. So we can drill down a little bit more um, by three different categories that, again, IRS Form 990 provides. The first is government grants, exactly what it sounds like, grants that are coming from uh, local government or um, state or federal government. Other contributions, that's going to include individual corporate and private philanthropy contributions. It's a very big bucket of money and unfortunately we can't dig any deeper there uh, due to how uh, IRS Form 990 um, is constructed. And then lastly, fundraising events. So what we can see here is RAC is clearly different from other LAAs and that it has a very high reliance on government grants. Um, that's the hotel motel um, occupancy tax that we see there. It has more than five times the proportion of government funding than the Arts Council of Indianapolis, the second most reliant on government funds. I think there's a couple of quick things that we need to talk about when we talk about government funding. The first um, is that AFTA, uh, Americans for the Arts, estimates that about one third of public local arts agencies are tax funded in America. So RAC is, um, again, kind of in the minority there. The second is that for many years, government tax funding was considered the gold standard in the local arts agency field. Um, it was not only considered to be more reliable funding, uh, but a larger bucket of funding, um, and much more stable than other types of government funding like appropriations, um, and certainly more stable than private funding, uh, private philanthropy. And this is also true within the larger nonprofit sector. Um, there was a recent study in which um, the largest like 100 nonprofits uh, were examined and it was found that 90% of them had a single dominant source of funding uh, such as government individual donations, corporate gifts, etc. 
um, and that on average, the dominant funding source can for just over 90% of the organization's total funding. So, and, and most of those were government funded or they were most reliant on government funds. So that is to say that, you know, past research has really led us to understand that government funding is more reliable, it's a driver of high growth organizations, um, and that frankly, um, diversification of fun funds doesn't necessarily serve an organization well. Um, rather, a lot of times organizations get big because they're really reliant on one type of funding and then really leverage it. So I think that COVID-19 has really made us question a lot of this um, previous research um, when we've seen government grant funding go down considerably. And you know, I think we're still really trying to understand what the impact um, is on local arts agencies that are part of government or hi highly reliant on government funding. Um, but I think the important takeaway here is just that RAC is much different than these other LAAs. And again, we know that Fund for the Arts is actually a United Arts funder, so it makes a lot of sense that other contributions make up the majority um, of their uh, revenue mix um, because they're really meant to raise funds um, from individuals, corporate foundations, private philanthropy, et cetera. Not, not necessarily through government, though they do obviously receive a little bit of government funding. Um, I also wanted to point out that um, Arts KC does, again, look a little bit different than other LAAs here, primarily in that they um, actually raise a fair amount, 18.9% of their revenue from fundraising events, which is you know, nowhere near what other LAAs are doing. Um, so they are you know, a little bit more diverse, or the most diverse in terms of contributions and grants um, than any other LAA. But again, more diverse, but they're also the smallest organization, which kind of gets back to that conversation around um, being high reliant on one source of revenue and high growth. Um, high growth, though, clearly does not mean sustainability. Next, we're going to look at the percent change in total revenue by LAA from 2019 to 2020. We already talked a little bit about this when we looked at um, total revenue, but I think something that's really important to discuss um, is first and foremost, uh, the relationship between different types of funding and decreases or increases um, and kind of just what we're seeing across the board. So when we look at the overall mix here, we can see that all three, organiz all three LAAs had decreases in their revenue with the exception of Indianapolis, which again is very different from other LAAs. They received that one-time grant of $10.2 million in 2020 to distribute for COVID relief. When we're looking at the other two, or pardon me, other three LAAs, we can start to see that first and foremost, RAC had the largest percent decrease in funds at 57.1% between 2019 and 2020. Fund for the Arts and Arts KC percent revenue loss is about half of RAC's, or about roughly 25%. And I think that this raises a couple of questions that the field is struggling with right now. Um, first and foremost is, is there a relationship between you know, reliant, high reliance on government funding, which is RAC, especially hotel occupancy taxes, and having larger revenue losses in COVID-19. Obviously, we know COVID-19 really disrupted travel, stay, et cetera. Um, and the other question is, you know, are these percent losses typical of the field across the board? Um, we don't necessarily have good information about that right now. But again, I do think it's important just to be able to think about how, um, the revenue loss that RAC incurred and also, you know, if it's high reliance on government funding, um, maybe amplify those impacts of COVID-19. Next, we're going to look at total employees by LAA. So I should make a really quick note that when we're talking about total employees, this data is again taken from IRS Forms 990 and they um, essentially use the W-3 or a transmittal of wage and tax statements to measure the number of employees. Um, it really requires an organization to report any, um, any employee that is paid more than $600. So we could be talking about very much so less than part-time employees um, or less than full-time employees, full-time employees, you name it. Like it really covers all employees. So that is the same when we're looking at these numbers, don't assume that this is just full-time staff. 
Um, importantly, you know, two organizations lost employees each year, um, RAC and Arts KC. Um, RAC had the largest loss of employees in 2020, not too surprising since it had the largest percent decrease in revenue across that time as well. The Arts Council of Indianapolis was consistent between 2019 and 2020. Again, it did not suffer any losses in revenue during that time. Um, and Fund of Merits actually increased its number of employees. That, be, that could be because they were rely, relying more on less than full-time employees to fill positions. It's, again, a little bit hard to say um, since the total number of employees covers such a broad category of employees. Lastly, we're going to look at expenses by LAA. Um, again, this data comes from IRS Forms 990, which really divide expenses into three large buckets. The first is grants paid. So that's the total amount or dollar amount of grants that an LAA administers in one year. Whoops, pardon me. Um, the next is salaries and compensation and then other expenses. So RAC, Arts Council of Indianapolis, and Fund for the Arts all have very comparable expenses. Um, more than six out of $10 go directly to grantees, about two and $10 go to each to salaries and compensation and then other expenses. Arts KC has a very different composition of expenses than the other three. Its proportion of grants paid is about one third that of the others, whereas salaries and compensation is about twice the proportion. They do not seem, they do seem like they provide um, quite a few services outside of grant making. Um, for et cetera, I know that they, for example, pardon me, I know that they provide professional development classes, art curation services, advocacy, et cetera. Um, and, you know, they really have a pretty large staff for the size of their budget. So RAC's 2018 and 2019 budgets are about 3.8 times larger than Arts KC's budget, but the staff is only 1.25 times larger. So it's clear that they just you know, have a much larger staff and much larger, you know, larger um, salaries and compensation because of that over that time. And just as a reminder, again, that could be um, because they rely more on less than full-time employees, part-time employees, et cetera, which are just being captured in IRS Forms 990. It's a little bit hard to say. Um, but that is, uh, that concludes the presentation on local arts agencies. Um, I hope that it was helpful um, not only to provide an overview of local arts agencies in America, um, but also a little bit more information about how RAC steps, stacks up financially to their peers, um, both in terms of um, expenses and revenues. Um, thank you both so much. Thank you so much for um, listening to the presentation um, and have a great day.